Hello, and welcome back to CS11. This is lecture number 3C, and we'll talk uh, today about uh, input commands and a little bit about formatting output. And this corresponds to the textbooks section uh, 2.3. Last time we talked about uh, variables, and we saw that one way for a variable to get a value was from an assignment statement. And today, we're going to talk about another way for a variable to get a value, and that's uh, via an input command, um, where we um, have the user uh, provide a value for uh, one of our variables. So let's start off by creating a variable, and here we'll say tofu in ounces, and if we want we can initialize that to zero. And in this program, we're going to be asking the user uh, the price per ounce of uh, tofu and how many ounces of tofu they would like to buy, and then we'll calculate the um, total uh, cost of that. To do input, well, you're going to use the cin command. It's for character input. And we use the stream extraction operator, which is two greater than sign. So notice it points in the other direction than output. And then that's followed by the name of the variable that we want to do input to. So here, tofu ounces. We could input to any of the basic variable types, including ints, doubles, and strings. Um, so whatever type of input you need, just put that kind of variable, and then C++ will perform that type of input. Let's go ahead and compile and run this program. G++ minus wall minus pedantic and this program is lectureec.cpp and we'll compile and run the program and hmm, what's happening here? Well, the program is waiting for input. Well, how do we know that? The only reason we know that is because we wrote the program and we can look over right over here and see the source code of the program. And if we type in a value for and hit enter, the program ends. What we need to do is communicate to someone who's running the program that, hey, the program is waiting for your input. And we can do that by first doing some output, but a special kind of output that we might also describe as a prompt, giving information to the user that they need to be typing in or entering some values. So how many ounces of tofu would you like to buy? question mark, space, and then a semicolon. Now I've got the font size turned up pretty large to make it very re readable on the video. On uh, When you're working on a program like this at home, you'd be able to usually get quite a bit more text in there. Let's compile and run the program. And now we've got a prompt. And so now we type in five, and now it's a little bit less mysterious. OK, well, we can repeat that process for more than one variable. Let's add another variable. This one will be a double because it's going to have a, a, a fractional component. And we'll call this tofu cost per ounce. And we'll initialize that to 0, 0.0. Once again, we'll prompt the user see out what is the cost of tofu per ounce. And then we will input now to our variable here, tofu cost per ounce. Now, if we look at the variable names, you'll notice, by the way, that I've written them together as a series of words where the first word um, starts in lowercase, and then each subsequent word has an uh, initial uppercase character. This is one of the two standard conventions for how variable names looks. And you see the other one described in the textbook which is uh, words written in lowercase and connected with underscores. So those are both very typical. Um, and as you look at many programs, you'll see plenty of examples of both of those styles. All right, let's recompile the program and run again. And five and cost per ounce, five. Okay. So that program is running with two inputs. Now we're ready to do um, a calculation and calculate the total cost. Let's create a double here, and I'll call it just that, total cost. And this is going to equal the tofu ounces 
times the tofu cost per ounce. And now let's output that. See out your total cost is dollar sign and then tofu cost. You know what, let's do this on separate lines because in a little while we're going to modify how this works. Total cost and see out end line. All right, let's compile this again and run the program. How many ounces of tofu would you like to buy? Five. And what is the cost? The cost for organic free range tofu at 25.08, and there's our total cost at $1.25.4. Now, four is a little bit strange. Uh, we would expect to either pay $1.25 or perhaps $1.26 if that value needed to be rounded up, but $1.25.4 is a little bit strange. Since we're formatting, outputting dollars and cents, we might like to format that. So let's talk a little bit about formatting. Um, you see some example uh, commands in chapter two, and later um, on in the uh, textbook, we'll talk about many more uh, options for formatting. So let me just show you one brief command. And what we can do is if we insert an additional cout command, we can put some settings in there and here the command is cout fixed and that's not the name of a variables that's a uh, reserved um, word keyword and then set precision to and this is going to tell the system that when it's outputting doubles to format them to two decimal places and it does that uh, only for the display, so it doesn't modify the original double, so you won't actually lose any of your, you know, precision or accuracy of your numeric results. It'll only change um, how it looks. And then we compile and run the program. And 0.2508 and run the program. Notice we didn't get the formatting. Ah, well, forgot to save the program. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll save the program. And now we'll compile. And notice now I got an error. Error, use of undeclared identifier set precision. Well, we know that set precision is a legal command because I'm telling you about it, or perhaps you read about it in the textbook. And when you get an error like this, something that you know is, is correct, what that usually tells you is you've forgotten to include um, one of the necessary libraries. And in this case, the one we need is the library called IOMANIP, Input and Output Manipulators, um, of which fixed and set precision are examples of. So we'll add that in there, IOMANIP, and now we'll compile and run the program, 0 0.2508, and notice now we have the value with only two decimal places. All right, well, that's just a very brief tour of input and output commands. Remember that you can input any of the types that you need. Here we did an example of input with integers and doubles. And coming up uh, in a future but very soon lecture, we'll do some input with strings. All right, thank you.